Hi guys and welcome back to Swing Speed Saturdays. Last week we talked about the shoulder turn and how we're going to boost your club head speed, getting more shoulder turn. This week we're going to talk about the importance of lag in the downswing. So we've all heard about how we have to create a massive amount of lag starting down and then release that lag to create club head speed. Today I'm going to give you some great tips on that and I'm going to measure using my flight scope to see how important lag really is. I think you'll be shocked when you find the results. All right, so now let's put it to the test. I'm going to try to cast. I'm going to do my best uh, to really cast this club early. And what I mean by casting is as we're starting down, instead of creating lag and maintaining an angle and actually increasing angle between our forearms and the club, I'm gonna burn up that angle. And what that does is that starts to use up my swing speed in the downswing early. So my club will actually be moving too fast here and I won't have anything left by the time I get to the ball. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a few swings here. Let's see what the numbers read. We're gonna look at my club head speed and the overall distance and see how this affects it. Oh, I actually hit that really solid. I don't know, I just kind of timed it up. But uh, yeah, big time flip. That ball looked really, really high. Probably had a lot of spin on it. Uh, not too bad. I got 278 and that was absolutely just as pure as I could hit it. But my swing speed was only 102, which is really slow for me. So let me go ahead and swing a few more. I'm swinging so hard, I'm putting out a lot of effort, but I feel like there's just nothing there when I get down to impact. I'm actually hitting those pretty solid. So this would be a really good test, a really good reading because I'm getting everything out of what I'm swinging. Yeah, club head speed 105. And again, I'm 260-ish I'm or so on that one. So really struggling to get the club head speed that I'd normally have. <laughs> actually had a tree right here in front of me. I hit that one so bad, that was way left. I just don't, I don't have a lot of control of the face either because whenever I cast on my downswing, I'm burning it up and now it's kind of even with my hands and the face gets really unstable. So I can't exactly feel where the club face is. When my hands are in front, now it's leading the way and my face is gonna be much more stable through contact. So not only is it gonna give you more speed, you actually get a lot more consistency too. So that one was 101 miles an hour club head speed. Uh, again, that one hit a tree, so it went 180, it said. It didn't go 180 because it hit the tree and fell down right here. So we know <laughs> that it probably uh, kind of manufactured some of those numbers once it lost it. And it actually looks like it did go a couple, about 100 yards, and then it lost the ball and just kind of went off the launch angle that it went there. So now let's go ahead and we're going to reset the flight scope and make some real swings, some normal swings. I'll try to get back into a good swing, and let's see what it does at our club head speed. Today's tip, we're going to really work on what I call getting the shaft stacked as your hands are about waist high. Now in the downswing, what we wanna do is as we're going back, we're not gonna fully set our wrist. And as we're starting down, increasing our amount of lag and about halfway down, we're fully set with the wrist. Now from there, I'm gonna to go to my straight line release like we talked about in the system and I'm gonna get rid of all those angles. So you can see the angles in my wrist here. I'm gonna let those release out in front. And what that's gonna do is allow my club head to accelerate as I'm coming through the shot. You should see at least about a 10 mile an hour jump in club head speed. For you guys that are practicing at home, I want you to work on two things. Number one is you're starting down. I want you to pause when your hands are about waist high and I want this club to be vertical if you're looking from face on like this. So if you're looking in a mirror, I want this club to be straight up and down. Now it will be at an angle. So if I'm turning this way, when I'm pausing here, my club is on plane. It's at an angle like this. But if you're looking from face on, that's when I want it to appear to be straight up and down. That means you're retaining lag pretty well into the downswing. Now from there, we gotta let it go. That's what gets the speed. We get the lag and then we gotta let it release into my straight line release point which is 45 degrees after. So my chest, my hips, everything, my club, my arms, they're all releasing about 45 degrees after the shot. And that's allowing that club head to accelerate as I'm coming through the shot. So now let's go ahead and try a few out. We'll see what it does in my distance. Hopefully you'll see a noticeable Im improvement. It wasn't dead solid. My club head speed was 113, which is pretty close. I'm usually 113 to 115, uh, 306 total distance. So we can see huge jump in distance, huge jump in, in club head speed, almost you know, 13, 12, 13 miles an hour improvement in club head speed, depending on which shot we go off of. Let's try another one out.
Uh, so again, wasn't my most solid. Didn't catch it dead center. Let's see what the club head speed is. Yeah, 113 again. We're at 297, so almost 300 yards there. So picking up almost 30 to 40 yards of distance, picking up 10 plus miles an hour of club head speed. And that's the difference between casting early and really retaining that angle and then letting it go. So if I'd hit those dead solid, I actually hit the ones that I cast. I just happened to time up a couple of those better. If I hit these a little bit more solid, I'd probably pick up another 10 yards and I'd be around that 310 to 315 range, which would be a really you know, nice solid struck drive for me. So that's the real key. You wanna boost your club head speed. You wanna get a lot of that lag and release that. Go ahead and feel like you stack the shaft as you're starting down. And then we gotta go ahead and release that as we're coming through to get the speed. Work hard guys, work on your lag, and I'll see y'all soon. All right guys, hope y'all really enjoyed this video, but I got an even better bonus for you, and that's a lag video talking about the number one lag mistake that I see in golf. It's gonna help you to improve your distance and improve your consistency as you're striking the golf ball. So go ahead and watch the preview that's coming up here in a second and click the link that pops up in your screen or down below in the description. You'll be able to see that entire video plus five free videos that are gonna introduce you to the top speed golf system. Can't wait to see you guys there. Also, if you enjoyed this video, click the like button below, click the subscribe button, that way you'll see our latest, greatest videos. Good luck, I'll see you in the lag video. Hi guys, and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag, and then we're gonna to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you, can, that you can do to build lag. I'm gonna talk about the science behind why this is the case, and I'm also gonna give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. If I do it this way versus holding that position, exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we wanna do is throughout the swing, I wanna have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not gonna set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. I wanna use the full length of this club to build lag and then release lag. 